Enjoy the convenience of seven days a week banking and extended hours with Cube from First Arkansas Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Shap. Glad you have tuned in. Fall golf. Is this the best time of year to get out and play some golf? I tend to think so. A little bit before the leaves start to fall, but the weather is just turning to where it's not too hot during the day and it's really crisp in the morning. I think this might be the best time of year to get out and play. Coming up on this edition of From the Short Grass, I sit down with former PGA Tour member Ron Whitaker. Grew up in central Arkansas, attended Catholic high school, and was one of five off of his high school golf team to get a scholarship to a Division I program. He went to Wake Forest. You'll find out why he went to Wake Forest coming up in a matter of minutes. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels, one of our great sponsors of From the Short Grass. Find them on the web, bphotels.com. They know how to manage hotel properties. Matthew Allen, Blair Allen, the Allen family, they get it done. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We're back with Ron Whitaker after this. Stay with us. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. The economy is changing slowly but surely. The market is slowing down in a gradual slide. Not an emergency yet. The sky is not falling, but a change is coming. When times are good, auctions make buyers compete to buy at the highest market value. When the economy gets tough, auctions force buyers to make a purchase decision. Either way, auctions get the highest return for a seller and a strong deal for a buyer. With an experienced auction company, it's a simple process. Go to BlackmanAuctions.com for more information. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. Strength is measured not by the number of accounts. Strength is placing value on relationships. It's having the vision and the guts to invest in growth. It's the commitment to responsibly manage your money. At Stevens, we believe that our strengths build success, not only for us, but for our clients. Stevens, member NYSE, SIPC. Welcome back to From the Short Grass. I am Trey Shap. On the tee, Ron Whitaker. Ron Whitaker, welcome to From the Short Grass. Man, you're looking good. You, you've been working out, haven't you? I've been trying to. I'm 51 now, and I've got two kids that i got to keep up with. So um, it's good for me to get in the gym, and, and it helps me with some energy, which yeah. I need. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs energy Yeah, these days. Absolutely. When did, when did you first pick up a golf club? Do you remember? I do. Um, my parents were, uh, I don't know if you know this, but my dad used to work for Titleist, uh, cushion it um, for many years. And, and then my uncle uh, is Lanny Watkins. Um, and we used to live in North Carolina. And I think it was 1973 or four, the PGA championship was held in um, just outside Winston-Salem. It was at Tanglewood. So my uncle, I was two at the time. My uncle had a party over at his, over at his house and everybody came. Jack Nicholas, Johnny Miller. Wow. Um, Arnold Palmer was yeah. there. Um, so my dad 
had a um, or Lanny had a little cut down five iron, and he's like, "Or don't want you take Ron out in the front yard and see if you can swing a golf club." And I was two. So they have it on film, actually, of, of Arnold showing me how to grip a golf club when I was two years old and swinging out in front of, you know, Lanny's house. Um, so that's the first time I remember ever, you know, picking up a golf club. But after that, um, I always had a club in my hands. I was that kid that was whacking balls in the front yard, in the backyard. And back in the day, um, the junior sets weren't very good. Right. Every time you hit a shot the shaft would bend, you know, so I'd go over and hand it to my dad and we'd have to straighten it out or whatever. But, um, you know, ever since I, uh, was a little, little tyke running around and with snotty nose, I was swinging a golf club. I mean, you're two years old swinging in front of Mr. Palmer and Mr. Nicholas and all these guys. Tiger Woods is swinging at two years old in front of Johnny Carson on <laughs> <Right>. national television. <laughs> exactly, and Bob Hope I think was yeah. was uh, was watching him too. I think I would take so, uh, Mr. Palmer and Mr. Nicholas over those two. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. I don't really remember it. I just remember. Uh, <laughs> and parents, you've seen the video though, and I, was, and I remember my aunt still has the film. So, um, so that's a pretty cool story on. Um, whether so, or not that was the first time I held a club, but that's kind of the first time I remember anybody telling me that was I was swinging a golf club. When do you remember though that you were hooked on the game? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think I realized that um, I really wanted to play this game at the next level was probably when I was twelve. I remember I was playing in a tournament. First time I ever traveled outside of Little Rock area. I played in a tournament in Arkadelphia, and it was the first time I went and spent the night by myself. I had some friends that I stayed with, but first time I didn't have my parents with me. And I think I shot a couple under par. I shot 71 or 70, and I was leading the event. And I was 12 at the time, and I think it uh, it went up to 17 or something. I think Jack O'Keefe was maybe in second place or tied with me. And I was just a 12-year-old kid, and um, I remember that feeling, having that feeling of, oh, my gosh, now everybody's eyes are on you. And that a kind of adrenaline rush that is addictive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's uh, addictive when you play well, and especially addictive when everybody notices. So I think probably around twelve, and then it just kind of grew from there. Twelve, and then I went, when I turned thirteen, I, I started playing some golf tournaments outside the state of Arkansas, which I had some success with, and it became a drug to me. I just I craved it. You know, I would I would drive. Um, I'd ride my bike to the to the golf course before school in the morning, you know, when I was in fifth and sixth grade, and then I'd ride my bike to, back over to the club after school was out. And then it was just an obsession I had, and I loved it too. Um, that was kind of the most important thing. Um, but it was, uh, you know, at 12, 13 area uh, age age um, is when I really is when I really fell in love with the game because I always played I played basketball and baseball and I played football. But this was the one sport that, wow, it's all me. Right. You know? Right. Um, I there's can no do team. this by myself, too. Yeah, but there's and no team. There's no team. Yeah. So if you have a bad day, it falls on you. But I like the fact that um, there's no scheduled practice. It's what you make it, you know? Um, and that's what uh, I don't know. I just, I, just, I just enjoyed that, that part of it. Catholic High School, the golf team there. How was it back in your day? We had a great team. I believe that my senior year, I think that everybody got a Division One scholarship in golf. Wow! Which is yeah, which is pretty amazing. Um, my daughter plays for St. Mary's. She's on the tennis team, and my old coach Tim Glancy uh, now teaches is her coach uh, at Mount St. Mary's, and we talk about it too. I was like. Do you realize how good of a team that we had? We never lost a golf match. I think we won state once or twice, but every kid on the team played at the next level. And that really doesn't happen that much, especially in Arkansas. You might see that in Florida or Georgia or South Carolina where golf is really big, but we had some uh, we had some good teams there for for a stretch. I can name off Joey Nichols, Chris Jenkins, Drew Proctor, Matt Watts, all of us all of us went to go play in college somewhere. So that was pretty neat. You keep up with those guys? I talked to Chris um, quite a bit. I see him playing. Uh, Joey Nichols lives a couple doors down from me. So I see Joey, and um, obviously his daughter, AK, is is a heck of a player. Yeah. So I keep tabs on her. Junior Girls um, Player of the Year yeah, this year. She's uh she's something. But, yeah, I, I try to. 
you know, as much as I can. When you were getting recruited to go to college, was it a tough decision for you about where you would go? At the start, I always knew, growing up as a kid, playing junior golf, the biggest influences in my life were my dad and also Lanny, who was my uncle. And Lanny went to Wake Forest. And our family was very good friends with the coach at, at Wake at the time, Jesse Haddock, who was a legend. So I always wanted to go to school there. I always thought it was neat. Arnold Palmer went there, and the, the lineage there is, was, I mean, there was no one else, no other school, maybe Houston, that had the same type of lineage as, as Wake did. But once I got a little bit older um, and recruiting started, you have these coaches coming to your house and selling them, selling yeah. their school to you. And, uh, you know, Oklahoma looked pretty good. They just won the national championship. And Texas looked really nice, too, and, and Oklahoma State and um, some of the schools out west, which I'd never been out west before, looked really good. Pictures um, can do that until yeah, you travel absolutely. there. Absolutely, it's tough, <laughs> you know. And they bring in and they, your mom and dad are sitting there and they're laying it all and telling telling your parents how great you are. And they mother's got tears in her eyes, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what what do I do now? You know, um, but um, but I decided to go to Wake Forest, which was a great decision for me. It was a small school. Um, and uh, it uh, Winston Salem was a lot like Little Rock. Uh, we played at a golf course called Old Town, which r- reminded me of uh, Little Rock Country Club. Mm-hmm. Um, just with the the way the golf course was set up, it was an old school uh, style of course, a lot of undulations. So that was familiar to me because I, growing up, I played out at Little Rock Country Club every once in a while, and uh, I was familiar with that type of golf. So it was a great experience. I'm still very close with my golf coach. Uh, that was there, Jack Lewis, and still friends with quite a few of the guys on the team too. So it um, it was a great place to go to school. And looking back, I don't think I would made a different choice. After Wake Forest turned professional, mm-hmm. that's a tough road to try and make it onto the PGA Tour. How was your trek towards getting that tour card? I remember when I graduated, left Wake, my whole mindset was I've got to get on tour. That was my education was was the PJ Tour. As you know, it's it's hard to get out there. You know, you're but when you're a 21 year old kid, you think that you can do anything. Uh, I went to Q school right when I got out, made it through the first stage, and missed the second stage by two or three shots. And then I was like, "What am I going to do now?" You know, there was you know the Hooters Tour back in the day, and there were a couple other mini tours around the country that you could go play on, but Nothing really excited me enough to to spend however much it cost at the time to to travel, um, going and playing in small little towns for for no money. So, but um, I got a phone call from a buddy of mine, Ken Duke um, and, and David White, who who I both grew up playing golf with. They's like, let's go to South Africa to play. I'm like, South Africa, what's over there? Yeah, <laughs> monkeys and tigers. <laughs> And they said, no, there's a great tour over there where all the guys from Europe come over and play in the wintertime. Fantastic golf courses. The money's really good. And there's some incentives. If you play well, you can go and play in Europe and Asia and actually some exemptions if you win a tournament to play on the PJ Tour. I was like, I'm in. So I went and worked for four or five months, made enough money to pay for my trip and went over to Johannesburg and then flew from Johannesburg down to... Um, a place called George was the first event, and it was a beautiful place. It was kind of like Torrey Pines, mm-hmm. and I was shocked how, how pretty it was. Right there on the coast, right? Right on the coast. Um, and the deal was, if you made it through the first stage of Q school, you had playing privileges on the Sunshine Tour, but you had to Monday qualify, and if you Monday qualified, got in, made the cut, you were into the next week. The first week, I, I Monday qualified in, and I played well enough. I made the cut, um, and we moved on to the second event, which was in Durban, South Durban, South Africa, and, and then uh, beautiful golf course. It's probably rated. It's in the top hundred, I believe. Durban Country Club, right on the coast. Well, I ended up winning the golf tournament. It was my second week over there. Second, second week, week in South there. Africa, and yeah. you I ended collect up, a winner's I, check. Not yeah. I won the tournament. I broke the tournament record. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Holy I was just cow. like. I was kind of, I was so mo- motivated because you've only got so much money in your pocket. You're like, how am I going to make it over here for eight weeks? You know, and right. that was that was my 
that was my goal. Keep making cuts. I made the cut in the first week, which got me in the second week. And, and then I was just got into the zone where I just played some great golf and it ended up winning the tournament, uh, which got me into some, some other big events over here in the States. So after that tour was over with, I came back over, got a little bit of experience playing in some PJ tour events and then went on to Q school and then get my card that, that next year. And then after that, it was it was kind of a bounce back between the regular tour, a long stint on the which is now the Corn Ferry Tour, back to the PJ Tour, back to the Corn Ferry Tour, back to the PJ Tour, and then um, I ended my career in 2014 on the on the Corn Ferry Tour. So it was a long it was a long career, I guess. Um, would I would would I say it was a success? Yes and no. I think it was a success that I was able to play the game. Um, at that level for such a long period of time because um, there's a lot of guys that that uh, lose their passion after a while you know and I still loved it and I still I still wanted to do it until my into my early 40s but uh, didn't win a, a tournament on the PJ tour I went on the corn Ferry tour and some some other stuff overseas but all in all I got to do what I love and I achieved my dream of playing on the PJ tour so I can take that and put that in my back pocket. But it's tough once you get there. I don't think people realize how good you have to be to be on the PGA Tour and how much you have to work at it nowadays mm-hmm. and even back then right. to stay there. Right. It's uh, it's tough. And I see it now from a, a completely different perspective because now I'm in the golf industry and I work with these players week in, week out. And I, I, it used to be it was all about you. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, golf's an individual game, and you have your own coaches and whatever. Now I see it from a different perspective. I see all these players and how they go about their business and their struggles. I'm just not seeing my struggle. I'm seeing. I've talked to him on the range. You're like, how's it going? He's like, man, I'm. You know, I've missed three cuts in a row. I don't know what's going on with my golf swing. I got my coach here, but everybody's trying to help me figure this out. And back when I was playing, I thought I was the only one thinking that, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's just typical of way we are, but, um, but it's extremely difficult. People don't realize it because you see them on television and you, you just thought they had this easy track. Yeah. You know, they were drafted. They were drafted to get on the, on the PJ tour. And that's not how it happened. You don't hear the stories of they went through Q school 10 times or they might've missed getting their card by a shot or they were broke living in their car, you know, for a long period of time. And, and you don't hear a lot of those stories and people t- kind of take it for granted because they're out there now and they're good. There's a lot of really good players out there. You don't hear the stories of the guys that are living cut to cut, paycheck to paycheck mm-hmm. anymore. Is it because of the sponsors that have stepped up and that they're a walking billboard for, or what is it? Well, I think the game is changing now, obviously, with live. Mm-hmm. It's changed a lot. Um, you know, the PGA Tour is now, they're actually really taking care of the younger players or the rookies or the new guys coming out. Now they're giving them a $500,000 stipend a year, which before that, that wasn't the case. You know, you might be on the PGA Tour and might miss five or six cuts in a row. And each week, it, it's usually, a, it costs you about five to $6,000 a week. So now it's it's nice to have that in their back pocket that they don't have to worry about money. Um, there's some kids that come out right away and they're signing million dollar contract with Callaway or Titleist. So they don't really have to worry about that, but you don't hear this. You're not going to, hopefully you won't hear the stories of players that get out there first year that are struggling. There's two tours on the PJ tour. I think there's mm-hmm. the, there's this a tour, which the Rory McElroy's and, and all those top, tier players play in all the big tournaments and then you have the b tour sure like the sanderson farms and the shriners and the rsm classic and the 3m and the john deere all those big guys aren't playing in those tournaments because the money's not that big so you all the guys that are you know anywhere from 125 to 175 or that's their chance that's to their make, chance to make cake yeah you know and uh it's tough it's tough when you look at your career are you satisfied with it you know, golf has given me a lot. It gave me an education. It gave me a dream to chase, which I, which I achieved, um, an occupation too, mm-hmm. you know? So looking back on it, 
I mean, there's nothing that I regret um, that I didn't do. Um, you know, I, somebody asked me that question when I got my tour card for the third time. Like, this is your third time to get your card. Are you going to do anything different than the first two times? And I said, yeah, actually, I am. Because the first two times I was in, I didn't know what to do. I was, my eyes were I looked like a deer in headlights, you know, and I was, I didn't enjoy it. Um, and this time I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to smell the roses a little bit more. And um, so I, it's, there's so much pressure on you. You feel like you got to perform all the time. Um, and sometimes that gets in a way a little bit. And that was something that I had to learn through the years. I wish I was out there longer. I wish I would have, you know, I wish I would have been able to play. And then it's tough. I mean, golf is a tough game. You're beating your head up against the wall all the time because it's a losing sport, you know. And I wish I would have had the gumption to kind of give it a, another another go, maybe try the Champions Tour. Um, but uh, it's tough when you're out of the game for a while. You know, you're a player. When you're not playing every week and hitting balls every day. Um, it's tough to compete against guys that are. It's different when you got to tee the ball, in the, you know, on the ground and um, you got to shoot a score as opposed to going out and playing with your buddies. It's it's a little bit easier. No doubt but, about you know. that. What are you doing now? So I work for a golf shaft company called KBS. All the golf geeks out there probably know about KBS. KBS it wasn't founded by Kim Braley, but Kim Braley is kind of the patriarch of golf shafts. Uh, his dad started um, precision golf mm -hmm. shafts back in the 70s. And then Kim learned under him and started the rifle golf shaft. And then Project X, which is a very popular golf shaft now. And he sold all of his drawings back in the early 2000s to True Temper. And a steel company from Taiwan approached him and said, listen, we'd like to do some tour quality golf products. Would you be interested? And he said, sure, if we can name it under me. KB, you know, Kim Braley series. So that's kind of how that started. I used to play uh, KBS when I was playing and Kim and I had a, had a nice uh, relationship. And once I stopped playing, he asked me to come on board and run their PJ tour division. So I've been doing that now for seven years and I go out and work with players, manufacturers out on tour each week. A lot of travel. A lot of travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I usually do about 32 events a year, which is my travel week looks like Sunday through Wednesday afternoon, and I come home, get to spend some time with the kids and the family, which is great. Jump back on an airplane on Sunday and do it all over again. <laughs> but I do get to go to some nice places, you know, and I get to watch premier athletes each week do incredible things, and it's, um, it's really a blessing. Best golf course you've ever played? Pebble Beach. That's my favorite golf course. If I had to play one last round, it'd be Pebble Beach. It probably is not the best, but it's the one that... Um, that every time I step on the grounds there, I get goosebumps. Yeah. It's just, there's something about it. The ocean, uh, the topography, uh, history there. It's just, it's my special place. Small greens. It's very small greens. People don't realize how small the greens are. Yeah, they are. You're not going to have a putt more than 30 foot mm -hmm. probably on that, on that course. No. And they're usually bouncy. <laughs> <laughs> Bumpy. Because of the Poana. <laughs> because yes. of the Poana. Um, but, uh, Pebble is probably my favorite if I had to play the last, uh, last round of golf anywhere. I've played so many good golf courses around the country and around the world. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to say what my favorite one is. But, uh, but, yeah, I'd say Pebble Beach. Fantasy foursome, you and three others, living or deceased, who would you like to play with? Always been a Ben Hogan fan, so I'd, I'd, I would always – I would just want to watch him hit the golf ball. Um, I probably – I wouldn't say anything to him because I'd probably be too nervous. Um, <laughs> I'd love to play golf with Jack Nicklaus when he was in his prime. My my dad, for sure, because he got me involved in the game. Who else? Somebody like a Buddy Hackett or a Will Ferrell or somebody, <laughs> just to keep everybody loose, you know? <laughs> I mean, because you want to go, you want to enjoy your, your, your round and, and have a few laughs. I'm sure um, Will could do that. Yeah, so, I mean, just somebody random like that, that uh, – I always enjoy playing golf with with people that make me laugh because it's it's too stupid of a game to keep keep it serious. Isn't it? <laughs> you know? Isn't it I mean, it is. It's crazy. Ron, man, thanks so much for uh, joining Absolutely. me. Thanks. And uh, best of luck in everything and continued success with KBS. And um, enjoy your life getting to go and travel and do what you love to do. 
I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This is Thomas Blackman of Blackman Auctions. You all know by now I'm not a good golfer, but my son loves the game and he and I have been playing more. I've got my score down to, uh, I've quit playing a scramble on every hole. I'm using the bunker rake much less than I used to. And a lot of the time I hit my drives past the women's tee box. All of my success in golf can directly be tied to me listening to From the Short Grass. Without it, I would not be the golfer I am today. Trey, you owe me 20 bucks for that. Trey knows golf. I know auctions. Come see us at BlackmanAuctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. When your travels take you to Bentonville for a meeting with Walmart, a trip to Crystal Bridges, or the Walmart Amp for a concert, make sure you book your stay at one of the top Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group properties. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages the Doubletree Suites, an all-suite hotel with tons of meeting space and the Hilton Garden Inn, which has been newly remodeled rooms throughout the entire property. The best place to stay in Northwest Arkansas is a Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group property. Visit them on the web at bphotels.com. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. You can find Blackman Auctions on the web at blackmanauctions.com. There you will find a full list of their upcoming auctions. One of our great sponsors, Blackman Auctions. On the tee with our rules segment, here's PGA Master Professional Adam Carney. Adam, this comes from Eric and Pine Bluff. He asks, what is a way to correctly put a marking on your ball so you can identify it. It's endless, right? I mean, the player does have the responsibility of identifying his golf ball uh, when it's in play. He does not have a responsibility or there's no rule that he has to mark his golf ball at all, Um, although it can make it kind of challenging to identify your golf ball if you happen to be playing a Titleist Pro V1 and it's a number one. I mean, how many are out there? So you can go full Duffy Waldorf if you want to, where he'd have his kids like color his (laughs) golf balls and put pictures on there. You can put a line, you can use dots. You can, I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can buy them from the manufacturer with uh, initials or markings on them. You can. And, you know, I have my, my grandfather nickname on the side of my golf balls. Titleist does that for me, but um, and what is that nickname? That would be Bops, B O P S. Yeah, Bops. My granddaughter couldn't uh, couldn't uh, pronounce Papa when she was little, which was what my dad was, and it was it was Bops, and it turned into Bops. So now 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 even my golf shoes say Bops on them. But anyway, our rules guru is Bops. That's correct. Everyone's every every grandpa's got one. Trust me, it's it's the greatest naming you can ever have. <laughs> it's it's the best. So you know the the other thing to consider is. Um, how do you know if you're playing a Titleist one that says bops on the side of it, how can we be sure that's your golf ball? Because maybe you hit one over there in a previous round. Um, so what I would do if I was playing a tournament that was four rounds, practice rounds, I would black out the number round one. I played ones round two. I played twos round three. I played threes round four. I played fours and I had my identifying mark on the side of it. So there's never any question. That's one way you can get, you know, so if you buy a dozen golf balls for however many rounds you're playing, round one, you're playing a one, round two, you're playing a two, and if it's a 36-hole event, you're done. Or if it's a 36-hole, 54, 72, whatever, if you don't lose a golf ball on round one and you want to have the same marking on a brand-new ball for round two, you can do that. Yep, you can. It's a player responsibility to be able to identify their golf ball. And so, you know, if you don't put any identifying marks on the golf ball, and and keep in mind, scrapes and scuffs cannot be used to identify a golf ball, but they are in regular play every day. But, you know, you are required to be able to identify it and say, yep, that's my mark right there, Um, you know. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a title of staffer anymore. But you know, it is. It's the most played golf ball on, on, on PGA Tour and probably in amateur golf as well. You know, if if you're playing a Pro V1, Titleist number one, um, with no identifying marks, I mean, how many other people in the field are playing? Pretty that? good chance there are going to be others and, out there. And how many people that played the golf course for the weeks, months, years leading up to that? We're playing one, you know. Yeah. So I use my uh, my Bops mark on it, and we're good to go. Bops. Eric and Pine Bluff, thanks for the question. If you've got a question on the rules of golf, send us an email from the shortgrass at gmail.com. That will do it for this edition of From the Shortgrass. I would like to thank Ron Whitaker for taking time out of his busy schedule and talking with me. Also, Bops with our rules 
question. Didn't know we had a bops doing rules, but we do now. Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you sometime soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.